I finished this almond butter recently. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air and water. At the end of June, I started to take samples from the cup. First, I found dinoflagellites. These algae are mostly found in salt water. When it accumulates rapidly, dinoflagellites can cause red tide, which is harmful to humans. But a couple of hundred of them in this cup won't do any harm. A water sample on a slide has lots of debris on it. One of the most common of them is trichome. These barb-like structures produced by plants. They are the defense mechanism of plant life, and they are everywhere, including your lungs. Let's shift our gaze to these rotifers. They might look like boring inchworms, but don't let that fool you. Scientists in Siberia have recently revived a frozen rotifer stuck under the ice for 24,000 years. And lastly, I found this kidney-shaped protozoan. I don't know what this is, but it was going fast. Here, you can see how I am trying to catch up. After one point, it slowed down, and I could film it. I know, I was away for a couple of weeks. I had some computer problems. From now on, I will be uploading regularly again. The important question is, what else would you like to see under the microscope? Let me know in the comment section. I finished this almond butter recently. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air and water. Before I took sample from the bottom of the cup, I decided to take a look at the debris floating above the surface first. There are lots of things to look at in it. You can see insect parts like legs and antennas. Here is a trichome. This is some animal hair. I suspect it belongs to a squirrel. The cup itself is placed next to a pine tree and occupied by a squirrel family. Perhaps the hair came from there. There are also microplastics. Look at the fibers dangling out from this piece. Like it or not, plastic is a part of our atmosphere now. I prepared four slides during July. In the first one, everything looked the same except for dinoflagellites. They are gone. In the second week, the number of rotifers significantly decreased. You might think a microorganism sized one third of a millimeter has no physical effect on its environment, but you would be so wrong. All these contracting and expanding movements create tides enough to move this lumber of hair. On the third week, everything was either in cyst form or an egg getting ready to hatch. Sometimes nothing happens during the macroscopic expeditions. Then it would be best if you enjoyed the beauty of the simplicity of the micro world, like this air bubble. On week 4, I saw the very first tardigrade in my life. If you are watching this video as an accident while surfing on the internet, let me tell you, tardigrades, also called water bears, are celebrities among microscopy enthusiasts. They are one of the most resilient organisms in the animal kingdom. However, I managed to kill one accidentally while I was filming its transformation. Of course, I will not show such macabre footage here on YouTube. I have a Patreon channel for that. But from now on, more tardigrade videos will be on your way. What else would you like to see under the microscope? Let me know in the comment section. I finished this almond butter recently. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air and water. Bacteria are the problem and the solution. 
in every freshwater pond, big and small. They feed on the weak, dead, and dying. If too many exist, they will use all the oxygen and suffocate the rest of the ecosystem. If not many of them, most of the creatures will die because there is not much food to survive. Thankfully, this cup is not big as a pond and freshwater molecules travel and carry oxygen very fast. Hence, there is enough food for bacteriovores like this Colpoda. Also, there is filamentous algae present in the cup. They provide plenty of oxygen. Of course, going to A to B can be a little bit tricky when your legs and cilia constantly tangle up with it. Rotifers are the one of the first protozoa to show up in any ecosystem. This cup was no exception. I've shown many of them in this series in the past two months. They are constantly moving frantically here and there. In August, I could film one of them eating finally. Rotifers create cyclones, filter the water, and eat almost anything. At the end of August, it didn't rain, and all the water in the cup evaporated. Today, the cup is still dry. This will change the ecosystem in September when it's rain again. And I will make another report at the end of the month. I finished this almond butter recently. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air and water. September started with cooler temperatures. The stronger winds of the fall brought boulders made of quartz. The cup is located near a beach. These quartz pieces traveled four miles in the air before landing in the cup. The microscopic quartz is so transparent, my equipment could focus on this water bear behind it. Debris like sand and dust is very important for the habitat. Algae can hold on to it and become a food source for other organisms. Cover slips are an essential part of the microscopic slides. Even though they look like sticks on a microscope mount, on a closer look, we can observe that they float on the water. Sometimes, species can go out of the cover slip. This is entirely normal. Protozoans spend some time outside of the cover slip and then they come back. However, when this happens, most amateur microscopists raise an eyebrow, like something extraordinary happened. It is a human expectation that the organisms stay in the cover slip. From the protozoans' point of view, it is just looking for food. And food can be anywhere. The fall winds didn't only bring sand particles, but an actual alien into the cup, spruce spider mite. This one is a male. The female would be twice as big. They drink the sap of the pine tree. Each female can lay 60 eggs and overwhelm the tree. Mites are not protozoans, but they are very curious as well. This one is brave enough to go under the microscope mount, but there is no food there. Later, I found him munching on some algae. I tried to get a closer look, but the mite got shy and disappeared from the mound completely. That happens sometimes. The colder weather changed the population and the diversity of the cup tremendously. Soon, temperatures will drop even more. But I'm not worried. Some protozoans we observe today have existed more than 500 million years. I'm sure there will be something to mention in the upcoming October report.
I finished this almond butter five months ago. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside of my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air or water. A microscopy enthusiast is no different than a drone operator. We always observe things from the bird's eye view. It is a precious moment when the microscopic mount creates an illusion of a sideway view, like here. It looks like a tardigrade is emerging to the surface. This is the biggest tardigrade I have found in this cup so far. And it was a joy to watch it tippy-tapping. Yeah, they do tippy-tap. They also like to make donuts. Or a 360. Here, I catch him doing one. It is the fall season. All the other creatures are gone now. The diversity of the ecosystem tanked. All I see are tardigrades, water bears, and moss piglets. Luckily, they always put a fun show. And you can create stories about them. For example, three tardigrades enter a bar. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still working on that joke. As always, the cup's ecosystem threw me another surprise. In October, I saw my very first baby tardigrade in my life. They look like gummy bears. Moving gummy bears. They are even cuter when I speed up the video a little bit. Tardigrades are everywhere, but they only sometimes appear in the samples. I feel lucky and grateful that water bears have been showing up in Life in a Cup series in the past four months. But I hope to show you something else besides tardigrades next month. I finished this almond butter six months ago. Instead of recycling the cup, I put it outside my window and waited. Everything you will see in this cup is carried by air or water. Every Life in a Cup episode you see happens on a microscopic mount like this. All the creatures trapped in this slide must move in the water. In this cup, protozoans depend on their cirri an organelle of hair lined in a row. This is a colpoda. Do you see the line of hair on edge? That's cirri. Colpodas use this set of hair to go wherever they want, or spin like crazy until they die. Of course, cirri work up to one point. Heavier creatures, like this female super spider mite, need legs to carry their body underwater. These legs perfect for walking on a wet tree leaf, but they don't work on glass. It is too slippery. You know, the definition of the insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I concur, all spruce spider mites are crazy. Tardigrades are equipped with better legs. They can swim or walk comfortably underwater. However, this water bear is having difficulties. A piece of debris stuck on its leg. Luckily, it has a solution. It swims to the nearest filamentous algae, hook the debris to the algae, pulls and frees itself. The bigger question is, did we see a water bear solving a problem or was it a coincidence? A rotifer. 
Among all the creatures we observe today, they are the masters of moving underwater. Rotifers in the Life in a Cup series enjoy walking like an inchworm. It can anchor itself to any surface and turn around on the leg 360 degrees without losing balance. Can you believe it? This is the end of the season one. Second season of the Life in a Cup will begin in 2023.